What's going on everyone? I am back with another video and this week we are going to be chatting about what did and did not work in 2019 for our photography business. So um, <clears throat> I'm just going to jump right into it only because the, the replay will be uh, saved in the group but uh, I'm also going to take this and post it over to YouTube. If you're for on YouTube right now and you're watching this, I am Joe with Dana Joe and Co. Uh, and this recording is inside of our group, The Booking Lab. So if you're interested in learning marketing and how to get clients for your business and grow your photography business, uh, come on over and join us. So uh, it's, it's still January. It's January 2020, and it is one of my favorite times to actually take a second and look back uh, at 2019 and realize what worked this past year uh, and what didn't work because... Going into 2020, I don't want to keep doing those things that didn't work, right? Um, I, I feel like too many people do not take the time to really um, take a look at uh, the year prior. Maybe it was a bad year and you just don't, you just want to forget about it, or maybe it was a good year and you're and you're super busy <clears throat> and you just don't think about um, just taking a few minutes to really reflect on what happened. So um, I encourage everyone, you know, once the new year starts. You know, you don't have to have the full year plan in place, but at least have a few months, right? Like, what do you, what's your target for the next three months? Uh, it's becoming more and more apparent to me, uh, to the people around me in the community that, um, you know, distractions are everywhere, right? It's hard to stay focused. It's hard to know what to do, uh, what to go after, right? And if you don't have a target, if you don't have a goal that you're working towards, it's very easy that when something pops up that you just kind of go down a different hole, you poke your head up out of a hole three months later and then you realize you haven't really made any real progress. So Dana and I sat down uh, last week and again this week and probably sit down again next week and really planned out what 2020 looks like. So we're actually going to do a separate video. Uh, we're super excited to talk to you about our marketing plan for 2020 and what that looks like so you guys can kind of come along for the ride because we're going to share everything with you. But we have an overall theme for the year and how we're going to execute on that as far as marketing goes. Um, so, you know, we're going to be excited to share that with you. But before we even get to that, we had to look at, you know, what happened in 2019 um, that we want to keep and what are some things that we need to switch up and change because, um, you know, we have life circumstances, we have another baby on the way. And honestly, um, while as successful as 2019 was, we, there's definitely things that we can always uh, do better and improve upon. So I'm going to pull up Facebook real quick so I can look at comments. <clears throat> it's just easier for me to look at it this way. What's up, Brittany? How's it going, girl? All right, so, excuse me, I tap the screen. So I sent this email out. So if you're on our email list or if you send us over an email, um, I sent this email out. If you joined at a later date, uh, you may not have seen it. So I'm just going to literally go over the email just more in depth so I can expand a little bit here. Uh, via video. Um, <clears throat> all right. So I'm going to start off with what did not work in 2019, right? And then we'll we'll talk about what did work. So 2019 was our first full year doing uh, in-person sales with albums, right? So this was something that we really wanted to try out uh, and see if it was right for our business. Uh, what we did not expect was the amount of time that was required for albums, right? Uh, I now had to do extra meetings. Uh, the album design itself took a little bit longer initially. I mean, once I learned it, it got faster, uh, but it definitely took more time. And then when it came to it, I had to learn the in-person sales process, was, which was brand new to us, right? So at the end of the year, I haven't really looked at the exact numbers. I mean, we, we sold a few extra thousand dollars in albums. So if you think about it, like album upgrades and, and some extra albums and things like that, um, it, it added up to an extra wedding. So that's one less wedding that we had to book because we we're able to book um, and make some revenue via post sales. However, um, we didn't do as well as we'd like. Uh, I feel like one of the reasons is that is because, you know, we are a family of five. We have kids at home. So having them here and trying to keep the house clean and having a place to meet was really um, one of the biggest deterring factors. Now, that's not to say if you have kids that you shouldn't try this, right? We could have gotten creative. We could have done other things. 
Um, but we are very, very limited on time. Um, so if you are one of those folks who are in your business at this point and you have extra time and you can devote the time um, to basically maybe rent out a space or keep a nice space in your home and you can design two hours to, a, to an album design meeting, then absolutely try it, right? Like I said, we did make revenue even though we weren't very good at selling albums. Uh, we did make revenue so we booked one less wedding, right? We, that's huge. That's huge. That's clients we already we already had on the books, but we just made more money from it, right? So <coughs> uh, we're going to stick with it for a few more months, but we're going to look at how we actually market our albums. We're thinking of taking them out of the collections. Currently, right now, they're all in, every single collection has one. We're, we're thinking of taking them all out completely or just putting them in our top two collections. So we have a four collection system. Um, we're thinking of putting those into the top two, maybe offering some wall art as well. But what we're finding is like when we sat down, uh, it was like, hey, here's all your photos. All right, now let's do your album. And we'd sit there for two hours and, and design the album. And it was just, it was a lot of time, guys. It was a lot of time. And then trying to coordinate to get someone to come over during the weekday because we're really trying to protect our evenings because we have kids. Um, it just, for me, for us personally, it was more hassle than what it was worth, right? So um, this isn't to say that it doesn't work, right? I, I'm just saying it didn't work for us, um, mostly due to co time constraints and, and space availability. Um, but we did see a little bit of success. So we'll see how it goes in 2020, but we're definitely going to switch that up and we'll keep you in the loop with that. Um, all right, in-person meetings. So in-person meetings did not was something that we're trying to get away from. So in the past, we always did in-person meetings because we did photography part-time, right? I had a full-time job. I was in the military. Um, it was just Dana meeting with everyone, right? So, hey, you know, I'm going to go, be, like, that was fine. We did 10 weddings a year. It wasn't a big deal. But when you're doing 20, 20 plus weddings in one year, plus engagement sessions, right? Um, it becomes um, very significant time consumer and we don't live centrally in phoenix we kind of live on the west side a little bit on the outskirts so whenever we went to meet someone it was like 25 30 minute drive minimum that's an hour of driving almost every meeting right so what we realized was that if you come down here and you'll see our old systems was a third thing that did not work in 2019 um Having meetings in person was one of those things that was held over from when we were small. Now that we've grown and we're, we're booking more weddings, we realize in-person meetings is difficult. So we've really tried to push towards um, having more meetings via Zoom or just a phone call, right? So here's what it used to look like. Like it would have, all right, let's sit down and do your booking meeting in person, right? All right, so we get them booked. All right, now let's hop on a Zoom call or a phone call and chat about getting ready for your engagement session. Then it was another in-person meeting for your album. Then it was another in-person meeting for your timeline, right? And then it was another in-person meeting to deliver your photos. And what we found was it was just unsustainable, especially during busy wedding season, trying to hold all these meetings because we also felt obligated as a husband and wife team to both be there at the same time, which now we had to find a babysitter, right? So... Realize our situation's unique because, you know, we have kids, right? We got kids. If, if the kids weren't in the equation, you know, I'd be a little bit more inclined to do these meetings and, and still kind of hold on to that. But really at the end of the day, I don't think any of our clients complained uh, if we met with them via video call, right? Really not a big deal. So if you're out there and you're like, you know, oh my gosh, I really have this desire. Do I need to deliver this amazing client experience by meeting people in person? Absolutely not. Um, we booked weddings via phone call. We booked weddings via video call. We booked weddings via in person, right? Uh, we booked weddings via Instagram. So um, it's kind of like one of those things of being self-aware of what's working for you and what's not. If you're doing something and you're not happy, then stop doing it, right? Um, this is part of running a business. This is part of growing a business. Um, you, you guys are creating a business, um, doing something that you love, but you also want to create a business that you love. Because if you don't love your business, you're not going to want to keep going when things get hard, right? 
And one of the things to do that is stop doing the things that don't work for you. Um, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups. I, I listen to what other photography educators teach. I try them out. I, I give it a long period of time. And if it doesn't work, then I stop doing it. And it's there's, there's no right or wrong way to run your business. You just, <clears throat> you got to run the business how you want to, but it also has to be profitable, right? So, um, so if you're out there and you hear people say things or even hear us say things, and I'm like, hey, you should be doing this or trying this, just just entertain the idea, try it out, and if it doesn't work, don't do it. So we're really cutting back on in-person meetings this year um, and doing more via phone and video call and reducing the amount of meetings because our time's valuable, right? Um, yes, they're paying a lot of money for a wedding, but we are not accessible to them all the time, right? So um, we're probably just gonna do, hey, initial booking meeting, and then maybe a quick 30 minute call for the engagement session and then one last timeline meeting uh, via video or call prior to their wedding and just leaving it at that. So I'm um, getting a hand clap from Casey over there. So Casey knows what's up. So if that is like one piece of advice slash wisdom I can give to you guys, um, I mean, that is something to really think about early on. Because um, you don't think about these things as you're growing, right? You're just You're just happy to be getting bookings, right? But here's what happens is as your business grows quick or as you take on a bunch of clients, what ends up happening is as your business grows, the chaos increases, right? And then you got to hit stop, bring that chaos back in, get systems in place, and then you can start growing again. Um, so always be thinking ahead, always looking forward, saying, hey, is what I'm doing now, is this something I can scale? Is this sustainable if I were to have three to four times more clients than I do now? If you have five clients and then the next year you get 15 to 20, is what I'm doing now sustainable? Can I can I keep up doing what I am doing? So um, yes, Casey, we're always adapting, always changing, always trying different things. And if you're not, then you know it's going to show in your business. So, um, so that's my one piece of advice for you guys, all right? So in-person meetings, uh, we had a tough time with album sales, and then we had a tough time uh, with old systems. You know, Dana and I hate being disorganized. Um, being fully self-employed via our business, right? Uh, not only are we doing wedding photography, but we're doing this education stuff as well. Um, trying to stay organized, trying to maximize our hours or work hours at home was really, really cri critical and key to us. Um, and we found that our old systems um, from previous just it didn't work anymore we had to stop and hit pause and put some systems in place for it to work all right so i think i beat that one to death all right let's talk about what did work y'all know i've been beating the drum all year on engagement session giveaways right so <clears throat> we're sitting at forty one thousand three hundred dollars in bookings from the engagement session giveaway and i spent probably about 700 bucks on ads by the time you factor in gas and food and things like that, maybe $1,500 total uh, investment. So I put $1,500 in and I got $41,000 out, right? Um, I'm sick and tired of people saying engagement session giveaways don't work. They do. Um, the problem with engagement session giveaways, not necessarily a problem, is they're a lot of work. But if you aren't shooting, if you have no clients, if you, if you don't know where your next booking is coming from, what do you? What else are you going to do? What What else do you have to lose, right? Um, why not go out and do that? Why not go out and shoot? Why not go out and practice? Why not meet couples? Why not build your lead list, right? Engagement session giveaways work, okay? Um, not only do you guys see that, but you're going to see in May, we're literally being flown to Italy to photograph a wedding. They paid for our highest collection, and they paid for all of our travel, and they, so we're making enough so that Dana and I are even taking a few days to have a little bit of a vacation while we're over there. Like, and that was from an engagement session giveaway. Across the board, everyone's like, oh, it attracts cheap couples, the cheap surprise. Yes, that's with any giveaway. I don't care what kind of giveaway you run online. You know, anywhere from 40 to 60% of your audience is going to be people just looking for a freebie. But it's the other small percentage that you're really going for, right? So... For us, it made sense. We ran two giveaways. Not only did we run two giveaways, but we we went out and we did some epic engagement sessions, um, and 
we went to awesome locations, which gave us great content for social media. It allowed us to write a blog post, which that single blog post has also brought in extra uh, $5,000 worth of bookings, just in engagement and in pr proposal sessions. Um, so it, it snowballed on that. So it could be another three or four months before um, we're still making money off of those two giveaways that we did this past year because uh, we still have people uh, who reach out from who entered the giveaway and didn't win, um, who reach out and ask us questions. There's a couple that we've already photographed uh, who are interested in booking. So I fully expect this to be over the 50,000 mark in a few months. Um, so if you're looking for some way to jumpstart your business, take seriously, look at it, consider doing a giveaway. Um, I mean, it's, it's like, you know, it's, it, it, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say, right? Like, um, it works. It really does work. Uh, it's a great way to, you know, I don't know, like I said, jumpstart your business. I don't know what else about it other than I love them and I enjoy them. And we're probably going to do another one here. <clears throat> Excuse me, because we typically do bridal shows. We chose not to do a bridal show because we have a baby that's like due any day um, that we're adopting. So <clears throat> we did not do the bridal show. So um, we have a few more spots for 2020, but we're already looking to book out 2021. Uh, so we're thinking about doing another giveaway um, to get people in to the door and book out 2021 as far in advance as we possibly can. Um, all right. So I beat that one to death. All right, Messenger Bots. Messenger Bots work this year. Uh, I haven't talked to the, about them recently, but guys, Messenger Bots are still working for us. I literally get a lead, if not two leads a day or every other day, people coming in from Pinterest, our Instagram, our Facebook page, our, um, our web page. Uh, they're becoming a subscriber to our Messenger Bot. And... Uh, what the messenger bot has allowed us to do is not only collect leads, but is also allowed us to reduce uh, the amount that the percentage that we're getting ghosted by. All right, so people would reach out to us, um, you know, email, phone, text, whatever, and we'd follow up. But since we have the messenger bot in place, when they message the bot to get pricing, uh, we're seeing ninety percent response rate. All right. That is way better than email or text or phone. Actually, text is pretty good. Um, but as far as email goes, it blows email out of the water. So I, I ran into this problem where people would ask pricing and they were interested in our services. So basically I said, hey, if you're interested in pricing and what we can offer you, just tap this button on our website and you can get it immediately in Facebook Messenger. What ends up happening is they tap that, they go to Facebook Messenger inbox, says, hey, are you engaged? When's your wedding date? Great, here's our pricing. Uh, let us know if you're interested in having a chat with Dana and Joe. Boom, that's it. There's a lot of people who said, no, I'm not interested, right? They saw the price. I don't have to waste my time talking to them on the phone. And there was several people who saw the price and said, yeah, I'm interested in chatting with you. So then we'd respond saying, okay, great. When, when's a great time for you to hop on a call today or tomorrow? We'd arrange it and we hop on a call. It gets rid of the ghosting. It gets rid of the, the need to, oh my gosh, should I send pricing or not, right? Um, it was absolutely a game changer in our business this year. So we're going to continue to use that and I'm going to continue to talk more about it in 2020 and actually expand, um, my strategy with it. I'm, I want to start running ads to messenger bots more, um, and kind of refine that process, but messenger bots were definitely a win this year. <clears throat> all right. Um, all right. Blogging. I regret not blogging sooner. Um, after being on the fence for some time, we finally put our foot on the ground and said, we're going to blog. And we started in June. Um, so one blog, you can literally click on it here. There's literally one blog post. Um, it is the top outdoor engagement session locations in Arizona. So when we did our engagement session giveaway, uh, we went to some of the best locations that we could find in Arizona. And we found the couples that were willing to go there because not only did we want the great content, but we knew the couples would love it too. And then we took it and we created this massive blog post with all these locations that we photographed at. Now that blog post is literally the number one uh, search result when anyone types in engagement photos in Arizona. So we are literally getting traffic to our website every single day from that one blog post. Uh, and we've booked close to $5,000 uh, just in engagement sessions. And we also did uh, a proposal on Horseshoe Bend 
all from that that uh, that one post. So blogging does work. It's but it's also got to be strategic. So uh, on the YouTube channel and um, on the YouTube channel, and then also in the Facebook group. Obviously, you have um, I've I've talked about blogging, keyword research, things like that. Um, but if you have questions, let me know. Uh, but it's something I wish we, we would have done sooner, but it's going to be something that we continue to do throughout this year. We're going to be posting helpful articles, guides, um, you know, actually blogging our, some of our work, our weddings, engagement sessions, things like that. So um, I know uh, blogging is a long-term play, and, it, and it's frustrating when you have a lot on your plate and you're, you're trying to do all the things. Um, but, you know, a few well-crafted blogs that you can sit down and knock out in one month continues to pay off for for months if not years to come because that sits out there and Google over time optimizes for it and it grows and grows and grows all right so blogging worked and then the last thing was protecting our time right so we talked about this earlier <clears throat> where we were having too many meetings um, the album album design was taking a lot of time the album just in general was taking up a lot of time so what we found was really working. We kind of figured it out in the last quarter of 2019 where we started to um, essentially, we sat down and we, we time blocked, right? We said, if we want to succeed and continue to do this for a living, we have to cut out all distractions, right? Um, cut down your social media time. Um, we don't talk to people on the phone during our work hours. Um, we know exactly what we're working towards, uh, what has to get done this week, and then we we reserve that time and we protect it like it is I don't know like a freaking golden goose egg, right? Because um, when you start to let distractions in, it's hard to get focused back on what you're trying to do and what you work towards because things are distracting you, right? Especially today, you got cell phones, you got TV, you got everything going on in in the world, so. Um, we saw our productivity really spike and we saw um, our happiness levels also increase um, by putting in measures and things to really protect our time. So again, uh, it, you guys vary across the board of where you're at in your, in your business. It could be, you know, you're just starting out or you could be in the thick of things trying to grow. Take a second and really think about, hey, how much time do I have available and how much of that is productive time? How can I increase my productivity? The only way your business is going to grow is to increase productivity. The only way to increase productivity is to have a, a goal goal in mind in a game plan. And then you need to take that and you need to execute on that game plan by protecting your time and making that time sacred. Otherwise, you're just shooting in the dark and you're, you know, you're at the, um, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but essentially you're at everyone's beck and call, right? Everyone else has ulterior motives for you. They have their own agenda. Why not work on the things that you're wanting to work on? So protect your time. Realize that that is the most important thing. And then take consider blogging, bots, and giveaways uh, to grow your business this year. Um, really really take a step back. Um, you know, I, I can speak from experience. It's hard to take a day or two off. However, I would encourage you, take... Take a weekend, sit down, and write out this next year of what do I want to accomplish, and then break it down quarterly, and then break it down monthly, and then weekly, and then you can break it down into daily tasks. It's doing the small things every single day, day in and day out, that really moves the boulder to where you want to be. So um, I'm looking forward to 2020 and what we got in store. Uh, I know we're expecting and um, working towards big growth this year. We have a lot of big plans. In our next video, we're going to be showing you what our 2020 marketing plan is, which we're like beyond excited for. Uh, and we're going to be showing you a little bit behind the scenes of how that works and, and what we plan on doing. Um, but if you guys ever have any questions uh, when it comes to marketing, when it comes to uh, implementing any of these kinds of strategies, if you guys need business advice, if you feel stuck, reach out to us. Uh, send us a message on Facebook. Um, hit us up in the Facebook group. Uh, we're happy to help. We're here. Um, one of our big goals, um, surprise, surprise, is to grow this group this year. Um, I'm going to be putting some ad spend to it. I'm going to be doing it organically. If you have friends out there who are photographers and you want 
um, and you, you feel like this is good education, you feel like this is valuable, feel free to add them to the group. You know, we'd be super grateful and appreciative for that. Um, but expect more out of us this year as far as the group and education goes. Um, but that's all I got, guys. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Hope you all have an amazing day, and uh, we'll see you around. Bye.